verses 215 to 272 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 215 to 272. First before all was armed that emperor, nimbly enough his iron sark and dude, laced up his helm, girt on his sword joyeuse, out shone the sun that dazzling light it threw, hung from his neck a shield was of jeruned, and took his spear was fashioned at Blandoon, on his good horse then mounted Tonsandu, which he had won at the ford below Marsoon, when he flung dead Malpalin of Nerboon. Let go the reins, spurred him with either foot, five score thousand behind him as he flew, calling on God and the Apostle of Rome. Through all the field dismount the Frankish men, five score thousand and more they arm themselves. The gear they have enhances much their strength, their horses swift, their arms are fashioned well. Mounted they are, and fight with great science, find they that host, battle they'll render them. Their gonfalon flutter above their helms. When Charles sees the fair aspect of them, he calls to him Josserin of Provence, Naimon the Duke, with Antelm of Mayence. In such vassals should man have confidence, whom not to trust were surely want of sense, unless the Arabs of coming here repent, then Roland's life, I think, will dearly sell. Answers Duke names, God grant us his consent. Charles hath called Rabel and Guinemont. Thus said the king, My lords, you I command to take their place, Olivier and Roland, one bear the sword and the other the oliphant, so canter forth ahead before the van, and in your train take fifteen thousand francs, young bachelors that are most valiant, as many more shall after them advance, when Gabriel shall lead, also Laurent. Names the duke and the count Josserin, Go to adjust these columns in their ranks. Find they that host, they'll make a grand attack. Of Franks the first columns made ready there, After those two a third they next prepare. In it are set the vassals of Bivier, Some thousand score high-prized chevaliers. Never was lost the battle, were they there. Charles for no race neath heaven hath more care, Save those of France, who realms for him conquered. The Danish chief, the warrior Count Ogre, shall lead that troop, for haughty is their heir. Three columns now he has, the Emperor Charles, names the Duke a fourth next sets apart, of good barons, endowed with vassalage. Germans they are, come from the German march, a thousand score, as all said afterward. They're well equipped with horses and with arms, rather they'll die than from the battle pass. They shall be led by Hermans, Duke of Trace, who'll die before he's any way coward. Names the Duke and the Count Josserin, the fifth column have mustered of Normans, a thousand score, or so say all the Franks. Well armed are they, their horses charge and prance, rather they'll die than e'er be recreant. No race neath heaven can more in the field compass. Richard the old, lead them in the field he shall. He'll strike hard there with his good trenchant lance. The sixth column is mustered of Bretons, thirty thousand chevaliers therein come. These canter in the manner of barons, upright their spears, their ensigns fastened on. The overlord of them is named Oidon, who doth command the county Nevelon, Tedbolt of Rheims, and the Marquis Auton. Lead ye my men by my commission. That emperor hath now six columns here, names the duke, the seventh next prepares, of Petervin and barons from Alvern. Forty thousand chevaliers might be there, their horses good, their arms are all most fair. They're neath a cliff in a vale by themselves. With his right hand King Charles hath them blessed, them Josserin shall lead, also God sounds. And the eighth column hath names made ready, Tis of Flamengs and barons out of Frise, Forty thousand and more good knights are these, 
nor lost by them has any battle been. And the king says, These shall do my service. Between Rembolt and Hamon of Galice shall they be led for all their chivalry. Between Naumont and Josserand the Count are prudent men for the ninth column found, of Notharangs and those out of Bourgogne. Fifty thousand good knights they are, by count, in helmets laced and sarks of iron brown. Strong are their spears, short are the shafts cut down. If the Arabids demur not, but come out, and trust themselves to these, they'll strike them down. Thierry the Duke shall lead them, of Argonne. The tenth column is of barons of France, five score thousand of our best capitans, lusty of limb and proud of countenance, snowy their heads are, and their beards are blanched, in double sarks and in hauberks they're clad, girt on their sides Frankish and Spanish brands, and noble shields of diverse cognizance. Soon as they mount, the battles they demand, Monjoy they cry, with them goes Charlemagne. Geoffrey d'Anjou carries that oriflamme. St. Peter's t'was, and bear the name Roman. But on that day Monjoy by change it gat. That emperor down from his horse descends, To the green grass kneeling, his face he bends. Then turns his eyes towards the Orient, Calls upon God with heartiest intent. Very father, this day do me defend, Who to Jonah's succour didst truly send, out of the whale's belly, where he was pent, and who did spare the king of Nineveh, and Daniel for marvellous torment, when he was caged within the lion's den, and three children all in fire ardent, thy gracious love to me be here present. In thy mercy, if it please thee, consent, that my nephew Roland I may avenge. When he had prayed, upon his feet he stepped, with the strong mark of virtue signed his head. Upon his swift charger the king mounted, while Josserin and Names his stirrup held. He took his shield, his trenchant spear he kept. Fine limbs he had, both gallant and well set. Clear was his face and filled with good intent. Vigorously he cantered onward thence. In front, in rear, they sounded their trumpets. Above them all boomed the oliphant again. Then all the Franks for pity of Roland wept. That emperor canters in noble array, Over his sack all of his beard displays, For love of him or others do the same, Five score thousand francs are thereby made plain, They pass those peaks, those rocks, and those mountains, Those terrible narrows, and those deep vales, Then issue from the passes and the wastes, Till they are come into the march of Spain, A halt they've made in the middle of a plain. To Balagant his vanguard comes again, a Sulian has told his message. We have seen Charles, that haughty sovereign. Fierce are his men, they have no mind to fail. Arm yourself then, battle you'll have to-day. Says Balagant, mine is great vassalage. Let horns this news to my pagans proclaim. Through all the host they have their drums sounded, and their bugles and very clear trumpets. Pagans dismount that they may arm themselves. Their admiral will stay no longer then, puts on a sark embroidered in the hems, laces his helm that is with gold begemmed. After, his sword on his left side he set, out of his pride a name for it he spelt, like to Carlun's, as he has heard it said. Sir Precious, he bade his own be clept. T'was their ensign when they to battle went, his chevaliers. He gave that cry to them, his own broad shield he hangs upon his neck. Round its gold boss a band of crystal went. The strap of it was a good silken web. He grasps his spear, the which he calls Maltet, so great its shaft as is a stout cudgel. Beneath its steel alone a mule had bent. On his charger is Balagant mounted, Marcules from overseas his stirrup held. That warrior with a great stride he stepped. Small were his thighs, his ribs of wide extent. Great was his breast, and finely fashioned, with shoulders broad and very clear aspect. Proud was his face, his hair was ringleted. White as a flower in summer was his head. His vassalage had often been proved. God, what a knight, were he a Christian yet! 
his horse he spurred, the clear blood issued. He's galloped on, over a ditch he slept. Full fifty feet a man might mark its breadth. Pagans cry out, our marches shall be held. There is no Frank, may once with him contest. Will he or nil, his life he'll soon have spent. Charles is mad that he departs not hence. That admiral, to a baron's like enough, White as his beard, as flowers by summer burnt, In his own laws of wisdom hath he much, And in battle he's proud and arduous. His son Malprimes is very chivalrous, He's great and strong, his ancestors were thus. Says to his sire, To canter then let us, I marvel much that soon we'll see Carlun. Says Baligant, Yea, for he's very pruff. In many tales honour to him is done. He hath no more Roland, his sister's son. He'll have no strength to stay and fight with us. Fair son Malprimes, then says to him Baligant, Was slain yestreen the good vassal Rolands, And Oliver, the proud and valiant, The dozen peers whom Charles so cherished, And twenty thousand more Frankish combatants. For all the rest I'd not unglove my hand, But the emperor is verily come back. So tells me now my man, that Sulian. Ten great columns he set to them in their ranks. He is a proof man who sounds that oliphant. With a clear call he rallies his comrades. These at the head come cantering in advance. Also with them are fifteen thousand francs, young bachelors whom Charles calls infants. As many again come following that band, who will lay on with utmost arrogance. Then says Malprimes, The first blow I demand. Fair son Malprimes, says Baligant to him, I granted you, as you have asked me this. Against the Franks go now and smite them quick, And take with you Torlo, the Persian king, And Apamor, another king lutish. Their arrogance, if you can humble it, Of my domains a slice to you I'll give, From Cheriant unto the Vale Marquis. I thank you, sire, Malprimes answers him. Going before, he takes delivery. Tis of that land was held by King Fleury. After that hour he never looked on it. Investiture gat never, nor season. That admiral canters among his hosts. After his son with his great body follows, Torlose the king and the king d'Apermont. Thirty columns most speedily they form. They've chevaliers in marvellous great force, fifty thousand the smallest column holds. The first is raised of men from Bunton Roll, the next after my scenes whose heads are gross, along their backs above their spinal bones, as they were hogs, great bristles on them grow. The third is raised from Nubles and from Blos, the fourth is raised from Bran from Asclavos, the fifth is raised from Sorbras and from Sores, the sixth is raised from Ermines and from Moles. The seventh is the men of Jericho. Negroes are the eighth, the ninth are men of Gros. The tenth is raised from Balid the stronghold. That is a tribe no goodwill ever shows. That admiral hath sworn the way he knows, by Mahomet, his virtues, and his bones. Charles of France is mad to canter so. Battle he'll have, unless he take him home. No more he'll wear on his head that crown of gold. Ten great columns they marshal thereafter, of Cornelius, right ugly, is the first, who from Valfui came across country there. The next of Turks, of Persians, is the third. The fourth is raised of desperate pinceners. The fifth is raised from Soltris and Averse. The sixth is from Ormelius and Eugez. The seventh is the tribe of Samuel. The eighth is from Bruise. The ninth from Esclaves. The tenth is from Ocuant, the desert. That is a tribe, do not the Lord God serve. Of such felons you never else have heard. Hard is their hide, as though it iron were. Wherefore of helm or hauberk they've no care. In the battle they're felon murderers. That admiral ten columns more reviews. The first is raised of giants from Malpruz. The next of Huns, the third a hunger crew. And from Baldis the long the fourth have trooped. The fifth is raised of men from Valpenus. The sixth is raised of tribesmen from Maruz. The seventh is from Luz and Astremunes. The eighth from Argoils. 
the ninth is from Clarboon, the tenth is raised of beardsmen from Valfrund. That is a tribe, no love of God e'er knew. Guest of Rancor, these thirty columns prove. Great are the hosts, their horns come sounding through. Pagans canter as men of valour should. That admiral hath great possessions. He makes them bear before him his dragon, and their standard, Tervigans and Mahoms, and his image, Apollon the Felon. Ten Carnelius canter in the environs, and very loud the cry out the sermon. Let who would from our gods have garrison, serve them and pray with great affliction. Pagans a while their heads and faces on, their breasts abase, their polished helmets doff, and the Franks say, Now shall you die, gluttons, this day shall bring you vile confusion. Give warranty our God unto Calon, and in his name this victory be won. That admiral hath wisdom great indeed, his son to him and those two kings calls he. My lord's barons, beforehand canter ye, all my columns together shall you lead, but of the best I'll keep beside me three. One is of Turks, the next of Ormali, the third is the giants of Malpri, and Occiants, they'll also stay with me, until with Charles and with the Franks they meet. That emperor, if he combat with me, must lose his head, cut from his shoulders clean. He may be sure not else for him's decreed. Great are the hosts, and all the columns fair. No peak, nor vale, nor cliff between them there. Thicket, nor wood, nor ambush anywhere. Across the plain they see each other well. Says Baligant, my pagan tribes averse. Battle to see, canter ye now ahead. Carries the ensign a bois of Olufern. Pagans cry out, by precious they swear. And the Franks say, Great hurt this day you'll get. And very loud, Monjoy, they cry again. The emperor has bid them sound trumpets, and the oliphant sounds over all its knell. The pagans say, Kalun's people are fair. Battle will have, bitter and keenly set. Great is that plain, and wide is that country. Their helmets shine with gold and jewellery. Also their sarks embroidered and their shields, and the ensigns fixed on all their burnished spears. The trumpets sound, their voice is very clear, and the oliphant, its echoing music, speaks. Then the admiral, his brother, calleth he. Tis Canavius, the king of Floridi, who holds the land unto the vale Sevri. He's shown to him Carloon's ten companies, the pride of France, renowned land, you see, that emperor canters right haughtily, his bearded men are with him in the rear. Over their sarks they have thrown out their beards, which are as white as driven snows that freeze. Strike us they will with lances and with spears. Battle with them will have, prolonged and keen. Never has man beheld such armies meet. Further than one might cast a rod that's peeled, goes Balagant before his companies. His reason then he's shown to them and speaks. Pagans, come on, for now I take the field. His spear in hand he brandishes and wields. Towards Carlun has turned the point of steel. Charles the Great, when he sees the admiral and the dragon, his ensign and standard, in such great strength are mustered those Arabs of that country they've covered every part, save only that whereon the emperor was. The king of France in a loud voice has called, Barons and Franks, good vassals are ye all. Ye in the field have fought so great combats. See the pagans, their felons and cowards. No penny worth is there in all their laws. Though they've great hosts, my lords, what matters that? Let him go hence, who'd fail me in the attack. Next, with both spurs, he's gored his horse's flanks. And Tensendor has made four bounds thereat. Then say the Franks, This king's a good vassal. Canter, brave lord, for none of us holds back. Clear is the day, and the sun radiant. The hosts are fair, the companies are grand. The first columns are come now hand to hand. The Count Rabel and the Count Grinamans let fall the reins on their swift horses' backs, spurring in haste, then on rush all the Franks, and go to strike, each with his trenchant lance. 
That Count Ravel, he was a hardy knight, he pricked his horse with spurs of gold so fine. The Persian king, Tolo, he went to strike. Nor shield nor sark could such a blow abide. The golden spear his carcass passed inside, flung down upon a little bush, he died. Then say the Franks, Lord God, be thou our guide, Charles, we must not fail, his cause is right. And Grunemann tilts with the king Lutis, has broken all the flowers on his shield. Next of his sark he has undone the seam, all his ensign thrust through the carcass clean. So flings him dead, let any laugh or weep. Upon that blow the Franks cry out with heat, Strike on, baron, nor slacken in your speed. Charles in the right against the pagan breed. God sent us here his justice to complete. Pure white the horse were on Malprene's sate, Guided his course amid the press of Franks. Hour in, hour out, great blows he struck them back, And ever dead one upon others packed. Before them all has cried out Baligant, Barons, long time I fed you at my hand, Ye see my son who goes on Caloun's track, And with his arms so many lords attacks. Better vassal than him I'll not demand. Go, succour him, each with his trenchant lance. Upon that word the pagans all advance, Grim blows they strike, the slaughter's very grand, And marvellous and weighty the combat. Before nor since was never such attack. Great are the hosts, the companies in pride, Come touching all the breadth of either side, And the pagans do marvellously strike. So many shafts by God in pieces lie, And crumpled shields and sarks with mail untwined. So spattered all the earth there would you find, That through the field the grass so green and fine, With men's life-blood is all vermilion dyed. That admiral rallies once more his tribe. Baron, strike on! Shatter the Christian line! Now very keen and lasting is the fight, As never was, before or since that time. The finish none shall reach, unless he die. That admiral to all his race appeals. Pagan, strike on! Came you not therefore here? I promise you noble women and dear. I promise you honours and lands and fiefs. Answer, pagans, we must do well indeed. With mighty blows they shatter all their spears, Five score thousand swords from their scabbards leap, Slaughter them, grim and sorrowful you'd seen. Battle he saw that stood those hosts between. That emperor calls on his franks and speaks, I love you, lords, in whom I well believe. So many great battles you fought for me, Kings overthrown and kingdoms have redeemed. Guerdon I owe, I know it well indeed. My lands, my wealth, my body are yours to keep. For sons, for heirs, for brothers reek, Who in Roncevol were slaughtered yester eve. Mine is the right, ye know, gainst pagan breeds. Answer the Franks, Sire, tis the truth you speak. Twenty thousand beside him Charles leads, Who with one voice have sworn him fealty. In straits of death they never will him leave. There is not one thenceforth employs his spear, But with their swords they strike in company. The battle is straightened marvellously. Across that field the bold Malprene's canters, Who of the Franks hath wrought there much great damage. Names the duke right haughtily regards him, And goes to strike him like a man of valour, And of his shield breaks all the upper margin, Tears both the sides of his embroidered hauberk, Through the carcass thrusts all his yellow banner, So dead among seven hundred else he casts him. King Canabeus, brother of the admiral, Has pricked his horse with spurs in either flank, He's drawn his sword whose hilt is of crystal, and strikes Naaman on its helmet principle. Away from it he's broken off one half, five of the links his brand of steel hath napped. No penny worth the hood is after that. Right to the flesh he slices through the cap, one piece of it he's flung upon the land. Great was the blow. The duke amazed thereat, had fallen in, but aid from God he had. His charger's neck he clasped with both his hands, had the pagan but once renewed the attack, 
then was he slain that noble old vassal, came there to him with succour Charles of France. Keen anguish then he suffers, that duke names, and the pagan, to strike him, hotly hastens. Culvert, says Charles, you'll get now as you gave him. With vassalage he goes to strike that pagan, shatters his shield, against his heart he breaks it, tears the chin-guard above his hauberk mailed, so flings him dead, his saddle shall be wasted. Bitter great grief has Charlemagne the king, who Duke Naaman before him sees lying, on the green grass all his clear blood shedding. Then the emperor to him this counsel gives. Fair master names, canter with me to win, the glutton's dead that had you straightly pinned, through his carcass my spear I thrust once in. Answers the duke, Sire, I believe it, this, great proof you'll have of valour if I live. Then gauge them, then, true love and faith swearing, a thousand score of franks surround them still, nor is there one but slaughters, strikes, and kills. Then through the field cantered that admiral, going to strike the county Gwinneman. Against his heart his argent shield he cracked, the folds of his hauberk apart he slashed, two of his ribs out of his side he hacked, so flung him dead, while still his charger ran. After he slew Gebrin and Lorraine, Richard the Old, the lord of those Normans. Presuse, cry pagans, is valiant. Baron, strike on, here have we our warrant. Who then had seen those Arabic chevaliers, from Occiont, from Argoi, and from Basque? And well they strike and slaughter with their lances, but Franks, to escape they think it no great matter, on either side dead men to the earth fall crashing, till even tide tis very strong that battle. Barons of France do suffer much great damage, grief shall be there ere the two hosts be scattered. Right well they strike, both Franks and Arabes, breaking the shafts of all their burnished spears, Whoso had seen that shattering of shields, Whoso had heard those shining hauberks creak, And heard those shields on iron helmets beat, Whoso had seen fall down those chevaliers, And heard men groan dying upon that field, Some memory of bitter pains might keep. That battle is most hard to endure, indeed. And the admiral calls upon Apollon, And Tervigan and Mahum prays and speaks. My lords and gods, I've done you much service. Your images in gold I'll fashion each. Against Carlun give me your warranty. Comes before him his dear friend Gamalfin. Evil the news he brings to him and speaks. Sir Balagans, this day in shame you're steeped, for you have lost your son, even Malprim, and Canabeus, your brother, slain is he. Fairly two Franks have got the victory. That emperor was one, as I have seen. Great limbs he has, he's every way, Marquis. White is his beard, as flowers in April. That admiral has bent his head down deep, And thereafter lowers his face and weeps. Fain would he die at once, so great his grief. He calls to him Jeanglo from over sea. Says the admiral, Jeanglo, beside me stand, For you are proof and greatly understand. Counsel from you I've ever sought to have. How seems it you, of Arabits and Franks, Shall we from hence victorious go back? He answers him, Slain are you, Valigant, For from your gods you'll never have warrant. So proud is Charles, his men so valiant, Never saw I a race so combatant. But call upon barons of Occiant, Turks and Enfrons, Arabits and giants. No more delay, what must be, Take in hand. That admiral has shaken out his beard, That e'en so white as thorn in blossom seems. He'll no way hide, whate'er his fate may be. Then to his mouth he sets a trumpet clear, And clearly sounds, so all the pagans hear. Throughout the field rally his companies. From Occiant, those men who bray and bleat, And from Argoi, who, like dogs barking, speak. Seek out the Franks with such a high folly. Break through their line, the thickest press they meet. Dead from that shock, they've seven thousand heaped. 
The Count Ogre no cowardice e'er knew, Better vassal hath not his sark endued. He sees the Franks, their columns broken through, So calls to him Duke Terry of Vargoon, Count Josseran and Geoffrey of Anjou, And to Caloun most proud his reason proves, Behold, pagans, and how your men they slew! Now from your head please God the crown remove, Unless you strike, and vengeance on them do. And not one word to answer him he knew. They spurred in haste, their horses let run loose, And wheresoe'er they met the pagans, struck. Now very well strikes the king Charlemagne, Names the duke, also Ogre the Dane, Geoffrey d'Anjou, who that ensign displays. Exceeding proof is Don Ogre the Dane. He spares his horse, and lets him run in haste. So strikes that man who the dragon displays. Both in the field before his feet he breaks, That king's ensign and dragon, both abased. Balagant sees his gonfalon disgraced, And Mahomet's standard thrown from its place. That admiral at once perceives it plain, That he is wrong, and right is Charlemagne. Pagan Arabs coyly themselves contain, That emperor calls on his Franks again. Say, barons, come, support me in God's name. Answer the Franks, question you make in vain, Or felon he that dares not exploits brave. Passes that day, turns into vesper tide. Franks and pagans still with their swords do strike. Brave vassals they, who brought those hosts to fight. Never have they forgotten their ensigns. That admiral still precious doth cry. Charles Montjoy, renowned word of pride. Each the other knows by his clear voice and high. Amid the field they're both come into sight. Then, as they go, great blows on either side. They with their spears on their round targets strike, And shatter them beneath their buckles wide. And all the folds of their hauberks divide, But bodies, no. Wound them they never might. Broken their girths, downwards their saddles slide. Both those kings fall, themselves a ground do find. Nimbly enough upon their feet they rise. Most vassal-like they draw their swords outright. From this battle they'll never be turned aside, nor make an end without that one man die. A great vassal was Charles, of France the deuce. That admiral no fear nor caution knew. Those swords they had, bare from their sheaths they drew. Many great blows on shield each gave and took. The leather pierced and doubled core of wood. Down fell the nails, the buckles break in two. Still they struck on, bare in their sarks they stood. From their bright helms the light shone forth anew. Finish nor fail that battle never could, but one of them must in the wrong be proved. Says the admiral, Nay, Charles, think, I beg, and counsel take that towards me thou repent. Thou slain my son, I know that very well. Most wrongfully my land thou challengest. Become my man, a fie from me thou'lt get. Come, serving me, from here to the Orient. Charles answers him, That were most vile offence. No peace nor love may I to pagan lend. Receive the law that God to us presents. Christianity, and then I'll love thee well. Serve and believe the king omnipotent, says Balagant, evil sermon thou sayest. They go to strike with the swords, are on their belts. In the admiral is much great virtue found. He strikes Carlan on his steel helm so brown, has broken it and rent above his brow. Through his thick hair the sword goes glancing round, a great palm's breadth and more of flesh cuts out, so that all bare the bone is in that wound. Charles tottereth, falls nearly to the ground. God wills not he be slain or overpowered. Saint Gabriel once more to him comes down, and question him, Great king, what doest thou? Charles, hearing how that holy angel spake, had fear of death no longer, nor dismay. Remembrance and a fresh vigour he's gained, so the admiral he strikes with France's blade, his helmet breaks whereon the jewels blaze, slices his head to scatter all his brains, and down unto the white beard all his face, so he falls dead, recovers not again. Monjoy, cries Charles, that all may know the tale. 
Upon that word is come to him Duke Names, holds Tensender, bids mount that king so great. Pagans turn back, God wills not they remain, and Franks have all they wish, be that what may. Pagans are fled, even as the Lord God wills, chase them the Franks and the Emperor therewith, says the king then, My lords, avenge your ills, unto your heart's content do what you will, for tears this morn I saw your eyes did spill. Answer the Franks, Sir, even so we will. Then such great blows as each may strike he gives, that few escape of those remain there still. Great was the heat, the dust arose and blew, still pagans fled and hotly Franks pursued, the chase endured from there to Saragoose. On her tower high up, Clombrami mooned, Around her there the clerks and canons stood, Of the false law, whom God ne'er loved nor knew, Orders they'd none, nor were their heads tonsured, And when she saw those Arabits confused, Aloud she cried, Give us your aid, Mahum! Our noble king conquered are all our troops, And the admiral to shameful slaughter put. When Marsile heard, towards the wall he looked, Wept from his eyes, and all his body stooped, So died of grief, with sins he so corrupt, The soul of him to hell live devils took. Pagans are slain, the rest are put to rout, Whom Charles hath in battle overpowered. Of Saragoose the gates he's battered down, For well he knows there's no defence there now. In come his men, he occupies that town, And all that night they lie there in their power. Fierce is that king, with his hoary beard and proud, And Bramimund hath yielded up her towers. But ten ear great, and lesser fifty around, Great exploits his, whom the Lord God endows. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep, But all the stars burn, and the moon shines clear, and Saragoose is in the Emperor's keep. A thousand francs he bids seek through the streets, the synagogues and the Mahumeries, with iron moles and axes which they wield. They break the idols and all the imageries, so there remain no fraud nor falsity. That king fears God and would do his service. On water then bishops their blessings speak, and pagans bring into the baptistry. If any Charles with contradiction meet, then hanged or burned or slaughtered shall he be. Five score thousand and more are thus redeemed, very Christians, save that alone the queen, to France the deuce goes in captivity. By love the king will her conversion seek. Passes the night, the clear day opens now, of Saragoose Charles garrisons the towers. A thousand knights he's left there, fighters stout, who guard that town as bids their emperor. After, the king and all his army mount, and Bramimund, a prisoner, is bound. No harm to her, but only good he's vowed. So are they come, with joy and gladness out. They pass Nerbonne, by force and by vigour, come to Burdell, that city of high valour. Above the altar, to St. Severin endowed, stands the Oliphant, with golden pieces bound. All the pilgrims may see it, who thither crowd, passing Girund in great ships there abound, even unto Blave he's brought his nephew down, and Oliver his noble companion, and the archbishop who was so wise and proud. In white coffers he bids them lay these counts, at St. Romain, so rest they in that ground. Franks them to God and to his angels vow, Charles canters on by valleys and by mounts, not before X will he not make sojourn canters so far on the terrace he dismounts. When he is come into his lofty house, by messengers he seeks his judges out. Saxons, Bavers, Lotherings, and Frisones, Germans he calls, and also calls Burgones, from Normandy, from Brittany, and Poitou, and those in France that are the sagest found. Thereon begins the cause of Gwenelon. The Emperor, returning out of Spain, Arrived in France, in his chief seat at Aix. Clone to the palace, into the hall he came. Was come to him there Ald, that fair dame. Said to the king, Where's Rollanz the captain, who swear to me he'd have me for his mate? 
Then upon Charles a heavy sorrow weighed, and his eyes wept, he tore his beard again. Sister, dear friend, of a dead man you spake, I'll give you one far better in exchange, that is Lois, what further can I say? He is my son, and shall my marches take. Ald answered him, That word to me is strange. Never, please God, his angels and his saints, when Roland's dead shall I alive remain. Her colour fails at the feet of Charlemagne. She falls, she's dead. Her soul God's mercy awaits. Barons of France weep therefore and complain. Ald the fair is gone now to her rest, yet the king thought she was but swooning then. Pity he had, our emperor, and wept, took her in his hands, raised her from the earth again. On her shoulders her head still drooped and lent. When Charles saw that she was truly dead, four countesses at once he summoned. To a monastery of nuns they bare her thence, all night their watch until the dawn they held. Before the altar her tomb was fashioned well. Her memory the king with honour kept. That emperor is now returned to Aix. The felon Gawain, all in his iron chains, is in that town before the king's palace. Those serfs have bound him fast upon his stake, in deer-hide thongs his hands they've helpless made. With clubs and whips they trounce him well and based. He has deserved not any better fate. In bitter grief his trial there he awaits. Written it is, and in an ancient jest, how Charles called from many lands his men, assembled them at Aix in his chapelle. Holy that day, for some chief feast was held, St. Sylvester's that barons many tell. Thereon began the trial and defence of Gwenelun, who had the treason spelt. Before himself the emperor has him led. Lords and barons, Charles the king doth speak, of Gwenolyn judge what the right may be. He was in the host, even in Spain with me. There of my franks a thousand score did steal, and my nephew, whom never more you'll see, and Oliver, in his pride and courtesy, and, wealth to grain, betrayed the dozen peers. Felon be I, said Gawains, ought to conceal. He did from me much gold and wealth forfeit, Whence to destroy and slay him did I seek. But treason? No. I vow there's not the least. Answer the Franks. Take counsel now, must we. End of verses 215 to 272《Verses 273 to 291 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 273 to 291. So Gwenelyn, before the king there, stood, Lusty his limbs, his face of gentle hue. Were he loyal, right baron-like he'd look. He saw those franks, and all who'd judge his doom, And by his side his thirty kinsmen knew. After he cried aloud, his voice was full, For the love of God, listen to me, barons! I was in the host beside our emperor, Service I did him there in faith and truth, Hatred of me had Roland his nephew, so he decreed death for me and Dola. Message I bear to King Marsilion, by my cunning I held myself secure. To that fighter Roland my challenge threw, to Oliver and all their comrades too. Charles heard that and his noble barons. Vengeance I get, but there's no treason proved. Answered the Franks, now go we to the moot. When Gawain sees his great cause is beginning, thirty he has around him of his kinsmen. There's one of them to whom the others listen. Tis Pinabel, who in Sorrent's castle liveth. Well can he speak, soundly his reasons giving. A good vassal, whose arm to fight is stiffened. Says to him Gawain's, 
In you my faith is fixed. Save me this day from death, also from prison. Says Pinabel, Straightway you'll be delivered. Is there one Frank that you to hang committeth? Let the emperor but once together bring us. With my steel brand he shall be smartly chidden. Gawain's the count kneels at his feet to kiss them. To the council go those of Bavier and Sax, Normans also with Poitavin and Franks. Enough there are of Tudies and Germans, those of Alverne the greatest curtsy have, from Pinabel most quietly draw back, says each to each. T'were well to let it stand, leave we this cause and of the king demand that he cry quit with Gawain's for this act. With love and faith he'll serve him after that. Since he is dead, no more ye'll see Rolands, nor any wealth nor gold may win him back. Most foolish, then, is he would do combat. There is but one agrees not to their plan. Thierry, brother to Don Gaufreit's that man. Then his barons, returning to Calun, say to their king, Sire, we beseech of you, that you cry quits with County Gwenolun, so he may serve you still in love and truth. Nay, let him live, so noble a man's he proved. Roland is dead, no longer in our view, nor for no wealth may we his life renew. Then says the king, You're felons, all of you. When Charles saw that all of them did fail, deep down he bowed his head and all his face. For the grief he had, caitiff himself proclaimed. One of his knights, Thierry, before him came. Geoffrey's brother, that Duke of Anjou, famed. Lean were his limbs, and lengthy and delicate. Black was his hair, and somewhat brown his face. Was not too small, and yet was hardly great. And courteously to the emperor he spake. Fair lord and king, do not yourself dismay. You know that I have served you many ways. By my ancestors should I this cause maintain, and if Roland was forfeited to Gawain, still your service to him full warrant gave. Felon is Gawain, since the hour that he betrayed, and towards you is perjured and ashamed. Wherefore I judge that he be hanged and slain, his carcass flung to the dogs beside the way, as a felon who felony did make. But... Has he a friend that would dispute my claim? With this my sword, which I have girt in place, my judgment will I warrant every way. Answer the Franks. Now very well you spake. Before the king is come now Pinabel, great is he, strong, vassalous, and nimble, who bears his blow, has no more time to dwell, says to him, Sire, on you this cause depends. Command, therefore, this noise be made an end. See Thierry here, who hath his judgment dealt. I cry him false, and will the cause contest. His dear hide glove in the king's hand he's left. Says the emperor, Good pledges must I get. Thirty kinsmen offer their loyal pledge. I'll do the same for you, the king has said, until the right be shown, bids guard them well. When Thierry sees that battle shall come after, his right-hand glove he offereth to Charles. That emperor by way of hostage guards it. Four benches then upon the place he marshals, where sit them down champions of either party. They're chosen aright, as the other's judgment cast them. Ogre the Dane between them made the parley. Next they demand their horses and their armour. For battle now ready you might seen them. They're well confessed, absolved, from sin set free. Masses they've heard, communion received, rich offerings to those minsters they leave. Before Kalun now both the two appear. They have their spurs, are fastened on their feet. And light and strong their hauberks brightly gleam. Upon their heads they've laced their helmets clear, and girt on swords, with pure gold hilted each and from their necks hang down their quartered shields. In their right hands they grasp their trenchant spears. At last they mount on their swift coursing steeds. Five score thousand chevaliers therefore weep, for Roland's sake pity for Thierry feel. God knows full well which way the end shall be. 
Down under X there is a pasture large, which for the fight of the two barons is marked. Proof men are these, and of great vassalage, and their horses, unwearied, gallop fast. They spur them well, the reins aside they cast, with virtue great to strike each other, dart. All of their shields shatter and rend apart, their hauberks tear, their girths asunder start. The saddles slip and fall upon the grass, five score thousand weep, who that sight regard. Upon the ground are fallen both the knights, nimbly enough upon their feet they rise, nimble and strong is Pinabel and light. Each the other seeks, horses are out of mind, but with those swords whose hilts with gold are lined, upon those helms of steel they beat and strike. Great are the blows, those helmets to divide, the chevaliers of France do much repine. O oh God, says Charles, make plain to us the right. Says Pinabel, Thierry, I pray thee, yield, I'll be thy man in love and fealty. For the pleasure my wealth I'll give to thee, but make the king with Gwenolun agree. Answers Thierry, Such counsel's not for me. Pure felon I, if e'er I that concede, God shall this day the right show us between. Then said Thierry, Bold art thou, Pinabel, thou'rt great and strong, with body finely bred, for vassalage thy peers esteem thee well. Of this battle let us now make an end, with Charlemagne I soon will have thee friends. To Gwenolun such justice shall be dealt, day shall not dawn, but men of it will tell. Please the Lord God not so, said Pinabel. I would sustain the cause of my kindred, no mortal man is there from whom I fled. Rather I'd die than hear reproaches said. Then with their swords began to strike again, Upon those helms that were with gold begemmed, Into the sky the bright sparks rained and fell. It cannot be that they be sundered, Nor make an end without one man be dead. He's very proof, Pinabel of Sorens. Terry he strikes on his helmet of province, Leaps such a spark the grass is kindled thence, of his steel brand the point he then presents. On Thierry's brow the helmet has he wrenched, so down his face its broken halves descend. And his right cheek in flowing blood is drenched, and his hauberk over his belly rent. God's his warrant, who death from him prevents. Sees Thierry then, that in the face he struck, on grassy field runs clear his flowing blood, strikes Pinabel on's helmet brown and rough, to the nose-piece he's broken it and cut, and from his head scatters his brains in the dust, brandishes him on the sword till dead he's flung. Upon that blow is all the battle won. Franks cry aloud, God hath great virtue done, it is proved right that Gwenolun be hung, and those his kin that in his cause are come. Now that Thierry the battle fairly wins, that Emperor Charles is come to him, forty barons are in his following. Names the Duke, Ogre that Danish prince, Geoffrey d'Anjou, Wilhelm of Blave therewith. Thierry, the king takes in his arms to kiss, and wipes his face with his great marten skins. He lays them down, and others then they bring. The chevaliers most sweetly disarm him. An Arab mule they've brought, whereon he sits. With baronage and joy they bring him in. They come to X, halt and dismount therein. The punishment of the others then begins. His counts and dukes then calls to him Kalun. With these I guard, advise what shall be done. Hither they came because of Gwenolun, For Pinabel, as pledges, gave them up. Answer the Franks. Shall not of them live one? The king commands his provost then, Basbrun, Go hang them all on the tree of cursed wood. Nay, by this beard, whose hairs are white enough, If one escape, to death and shame thou'rt struck. He answers him, How could I act save thus? With an hundred sergeants by force they come, Thirty of them there are, that straight are hung. Who betrays man, himself and his friends undoes. 
then turned away the Bavers and Germans, and Poitevin and Bretons and Normans. For all the rest, t'was voted by the Franks, that Gawains die with marvellous great pangs. So to lead forth four stallions they bade. After, they bound his feet and both his hands. Those steeds were swift and of a temper mad, which by their heads led forward four sergeants, towards a stream that flowed amid that land. Soans fell gray into perdition black. All his sinews were strained until they snapped, and all the limbs were from his body dragged. On the green grass his clear blood gushed and ran. Gawain's is dead, a felon recreant. Who betrays man need make no boast of that. When the emperor had made his whole vengeance, he called to him the bishops out of France, those of Bavier and also the Germans. A dame freeborn lies captive in my hands, so oft she's heard sermons and reprimands. She would fear God and christening demands. Baptize her then, so God her soul may have. They answer him, sponsors the right demands, dames of estate and long inheritance. The baths at Aix great companies attract. There they baptized the queen of Sarazans, and found for her the name of Julianne. Christian is she, by very cognizance. When the emperor his justice hath achieved, his mighty wrath's abated from its heat, and Bramimund has christening received. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep, and now that king in his vaulted chamber sleeps. Saint Gabriel is come from God and speaks. Summon the host, Charles, of thine empire. Go thou by force into the land of Bia. King Vivian thou'lt succour there, at Imphi, in the city which pagans have besieged. The Christians there implore thee, and beseech. Right loath to go, that emperor was he. God, said the king, my life is hard indeed. Tears filled his eyes, he tore his snowy beard. So ends the tale which Turold hath conceived. End of verses 273 to 291 End of the Song of Roland